Since the beginning of this long tutorial presentation on the Spark Creative Drum Machine from Archeria, we have essentially put the emphasis on the physical controller. We've understood that it alone already enables us to have a lot of control on our sounds, patterns and effects. In order to go further in our rhythmic journey, let's take a detailed look at some associated software windows, that is, the song window, the studio window, as well as the mixer window. Annexed to the patterns ring here is found the song function. This song mode is linked to the song window that we can show by pressing on select tree. In song mode, the pattern sequence follows the patterns order shown here. The orange space shows the pattern on which we're positioned and the flashing orange space shows the pattern to come. Here we can, of course, create our personalized pattern order by drag and drop. We got access to copy-paste tools here. The insert function enables to insert side-by-side -side a selected pattern, pushing the following pattern further in the sequence order. Inversely, the delete function enables to erase a selected pattern which automatically draws closer the other patterns to the left. Note that the pads automations as well as the recording remain active even in song mode. The window studio that we can show via the select 5 shortcut enables to see in detail and to play around with our 16 instruments. If we want to, we can show the summary of our 16 instruments at once by clicking on All. When an instrument is selected, you'll see a central image that will show you one of the three big sound sources that the Spark can let out, at least in this 1.4 version used here during this video. So we find the analogic emulation represented by a modular synthesizer image, the physical modeling represented by a kind of DNA helix, and finally, the sample trigger when we see a spectrum. A kit can be easily built without question by having some instruments using the samples, others the physical modeling, and others the various forms of Archeria's analogic emulations. Let's start with a completely empty kit and choose ourselves our sources for some pads. On the first pad here, let's choose a bass drum. We can select the instrument by clicking and now push the big button on the controller here in order to come out of the change kit mode. We see here the various instruments pass by. You need to press on the button to charge the instrument on the associated pad. Personally, I like to pass by the software since we got a better quick view of the various choices offered. Let's click on the instrument's name. Let's go in bass drum. Choose among the three sound possibilities, analogic emulation, physical modeling or sample. Let's take analog. So here we see listed all the analogic type emulation bass drums prepared by Archeria. Let's take for example the Dirty 909 BD2. We see here the parameters that are possible to manipulate on this sound. These parameters are taken again here on the main software view, just below each knob. In other words, if I move this knob on my physical controller, it makes this knob move on the software view, as well as this knob here in the advanced sound characteristics of this sound. 
The pan, volume, cutoff and resonance buttons are all accessible also on the controller via these generic buttons. We can select among three types of filters here. Low pass, band pass and high pass filter. Let's select pad 2 now and insert a physical modeling type snare. Let's take for instance the mad scientist snare. Note that we can pre-hearing the sounds also by clicking with the mouse on the small icon related to each instrument. The higher we click on the icon, the more it triggers the sound with a high velocity level. The parameters control logic for this snare remains the same as for the bass drum. However, some elements aren't the same any longer since we're using here for this snare the physical modeling technology. This kind of synthesis consists in producing sounds from a computer model describing the physical characteristics of virtual objects. For example here, by playing with the material and noise functions, we can give a more resonant and metallic side to our snare. The physical modeling is ideal to create unusual tones getting inspired by objects physical reality. Let's do a quick balance between our bass drum and snare. Now on pads 3 and 4, for the hi-hat, select a hi-hat sample proposed by Archeria. Let's take, for example, the closed Berlin Electro Hi-Hat on pad 3. And the open Berlin Electro on pad 4. Adjust the volumes. On the fifth pad, let's go get one of our own samples. We can, if we want to, pass by the sample search browser here. But we can do drag and drop of our samples directly on this window, which proves to be often practical and fast. Let's take, for instance, a synthesizer-like sound effect. As we notice, we can add up to 6 layers of samples. Let's add 4 sounds and realize that the various velocities trigger the 4 samples. Automatic crossfaders enable to have crossfades between the sample layers. If we want to, we can play the sound in inverse of some samples. We can set the volume of each sample layer via the little gain knob. Furthermore, we can set the locators of the beginning and end of the samples here. Finally, we can link all the samples so that the six layers can be inversed 
and controlled at once with a similar volume and be structured by the same locators. However, the other control knobs are applied to all the samples layer. In order to locate ourselves, we can associate a reference image to the instrument. At last, we can unload the samples layer by layer by clicking on Unload. The Spark software comes with a full mix table. You can have access to it with the shortcut plus 6. As we see, we can set the volume of various instruments. The solo mute functions already studied on the controller are found here as well as all the other functions, that is, the volume, the panoramic, the levels of the auxiliary effects 1 and 2. Each auxiliary canal may have two effects. In order not to extend the subject too much, I won't describe in detail the 8 auxiliary effects and the 12 insert effects that's possible to use with Spark, but they will be summarized though. Before looking at the functioning of the auxiliary effects, let's see how the insert effects are applied. The insert effects are effects we apply at unique instrument canals. Every instrument canal can have two different insert effects. There are 12 possible insert effects. The first, named Bit Crusher, enables to reduce artificially the instrument's bit depth, providing it this characteristic numeric distortion. We also see a chorus, which will certainly be more appropriate to use with instruments having longer decay like this. Note that each effect comes with a certain quantity of presetting made by Archeria. We got a compressor here with the usual elements that we find on the compressors. Very practical to have the instrument's punch come out. We also find a delay with a damping function to muffle progressively the echoes. We've got a distortion with various disto modes. Here you have a 3-band equalizer now. A phaser module. Another kind of distortion bringing, like the bit crusher, a distortion with a numeric nature at the signal. We find here a flanger module. The chorus, phaser, flanger are most of the time more efficient on sounds having long decays, but we can experiment them on instruments with very short decay as well. The space pan enables to panoramize in the stereophonic field left-right the various instruments every time they're triggered. The sub generator enables to add various sub waves to the instrument.
Finally, in addition to the compressor, we have access to a limiter in order to finalize the signal's dynamic. The eight effects that are possible to use in the two auxiliary effect tracks are identical to some that we've just seen. Only two new are present here. These are two types of reverbs, one standard and one plate. To add the wanted auxiliary effect those on our instrument from the controller, you need to select the instrument and to turn the potentiometers AUX1 and AUX2. We see right away that it's also found on the software. Note that all the effects, as much those in insert effect as in Sen 1, have dry wet slider, giving the possibility to dose the effect level in relation to the starting signal.